Today we're going to talk about what is entitled the cherubim and the tree of life. Agents, destruction or restoration in the human flesh. The first time we see and hear of the cherubim, they're guarding the tree of life, the actual tree of life, which we know represents Christ. It's interesting because the same cherubim we see are embroidered into woven. They are they are weaved into the curtain, the veil of the most holy place in the holy place, which means is that the guarding the way to the tree of life that is in the most holy place, the glory. So as we see them in Genesis guarding the way the tree of life, the same life, the tree, the same life in Genesis, the Garden of Eden, is that same life in the most holy place through the glory of God. That the cherubim are all throughout the tabernacle in the temple. Many people think that the, the cherubim are just uh, placed above the uh, mercy seat. No. You yeah, have the cherubim that are interwoven. They are weaved into the curtains of the tabernacle. That means the outer layer of the tabernacle and also the veil separating the most holy place from the holy place. All throughout the veil and the curtains, there are 10 of them with various colors, scarlet, uh, blue, um, and purple and with the white linen that also corresponds with the four cherubim what they represent with the four gospels so all these things relate back to christ the cherubim relate back to christ and the colors of the the the, the curtains that are woven together scarlet purple blue and white all woven together to show the characteristics of Christ. And those same colors are woven into the veil. What was also woven into the veil and the curtain is images of the cherubim. No other angel. It is the cherubim that are woven in the veil in the curtain of the tabernacle and the temple. They're engraved on the walls in the door post, the doors. And the door knobs. So you open all throughout the temple and the tabernacle. And as I mentioned, the tree of life, they guard the way to the tree of life. They guard the way to the glory that's in the most holy place, which is akin to the tree of life, which is Christ. And now what is interesting is that the same, the same cherubim that we have with the tree of life is, is also referred to in Kabbalistic, Kabbalistic texts. The Sephirot. The tree of life is the Sephirot, which is the ten emanations of God, which the unsolved, the limitless and boundless, the perceivable, he, the entity, this being, is and was and is to come no end, he manifests himself through these 10 emanations, through time and creation. So then there's the Sephirot, that is the tree of life, this, 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 this structure, this skeleton, which God and self manifests himself, makes himself known, makes himself perceivable, because without which he would not be perceivable, perceivable or understood. He makes himself understood through his creation. See what the scripture says, all of uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. It's also interesting to note in, in Jewish texts that the divine is concealed within nature. That's why when the cherubim cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was in his, and it's the come, the whole earth is filled with the glory. The whole earth is actually is filled with its glory. It is just concealed and you don't see it with your natural eyes. 
and all of the grass and all the trees and all of nature, anything that's not man made, the glory is concealed within nature. As I mentioned in previous videos, is that there are miracles encoded in the natural order. So with the divine and the glory of God is concealed within nature, within creation. It's just unseen. The glory of God fills the entire earth. It's just concealed. If God were to uh, unravel and unconceal, reveal the glory of God in nature, then you will see the glory oozing from the trees, from the, from the grass, and from the, the, the layers of the atmospheres of heaven. You would see glory oozing from waters and from the rocks and everything that is made by God, not man-made. Glory will be everywhere. You see. So, going back to the cherubim, why the cherubim are relevant, how it relates to us. It relates to us because it relates to Christ. Christ said, and Christ is this Jacob's ladder. Christ mentioned that Angels of God ascend, descend upon Son of Man, Him. He is Jacob's ladder. He is that gateway to heaven, that house of God. And we are one with Him. We are one flesh with Christ. So we are also that gateway, that house of God through Christ. You see, we are a temple, a living temple of God. So we're also mystically have cherubim woven into the structures of our bodies because mystically and spiritually we are a temple we're one with christ and if christ is in us then everything of which christ is and god is lives within us there's no separation there's no distance heaven is within us if heaven is within us and that portal to heaven, that gateway, that house of God, we are living portals where angels come and go, bring blessings and take things up to heaven and come back. Not through us per se, but through the medium, the portal of Christ, who is that Jacob's ladder, that ladder between earth and heaven, that sephirah, the tree of life, you see. We're living in walking portals of heaven. We're living in walking houses of God. There's no other creature or creation that is a house of God. Angels are not houses of God. Cherubim are not houses of God. Lucifer was not a house of God. Only human beings were made to be houses and portals of heaven, in which all of heaven and the things of heaven, the throne room of heaven, the river of life, New Jerusalem, is mystically, holographically within us. So we, the only, the only reason behind that is so that we replicate that and imbue what is in heaven upon earth through our inner life. That's why it's within, within us. So that what is up above may be down below, as it is in heaven on earth. But it comes through the medium and channel of the human body through Christ, who is the portal of heaven, the gateway and house of God. So the tying scripture into the how the uh, if you don't know the cherubim are woven into the, the veil of the temple and the ten curtain of the temple is it? Exodus 26, 1. Make the tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted linen in blue and purple. Scarlet yarn with cherubim woven into them by skilled workers. So the cherubim were woven into the curtains and the veil of the temple of the temple, the tabernacle. And Christ is referred to himself. We know in Hebrew, Hebrews 10, 20, it talks about how the, the, the veil of the temple was his flesh, his body. So that means that, that the, 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 the cherubim the cherubim were also woven into the veil of his flesh. And if they were into the veil of his flesh, they are also woven into the veil of our flesh because we're one with Christ, one flesh, to become one. We become one flesh and one spirit with God and in God. There's no separation as above, so below. You see? 
And the reason why this is so important is because what does the chairman do? They protect us of the glory and the releases of the glory. And what do they do night and day? They cry out, holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty who was and is, is come, the whole earth is full of your glory. And this is a praise, this is a worship. And scripture says, God, God rests, he, he, he descends upon the praises of his people. And the cherubim are, are heavenly representation of the earthly uh, uh, 12 tribes of Israel, of which the celestial representation is the zodiac. So the 12 tribes of Israel is the earthly representation of the, the, the four cherubim, which are 12. Three each, all resembling a man. So, in the true trans of Israel is representative of Christ because Israel is God's son and Christ is God's son. God rests upon the praises of his people. As God rests, the glory of God rests and rides upon what? The cherubim. God rides upon the cherub. He rides upon the cloud, the whirlwind, which is also the cherubim. As we know with Elijah, he went up in the world when he went up in the cherub. He rode upon the cherub. This is a vehicle ascension, it's a vehicle. You see, it's Jacob's ladder, it's a ladder thrown. So 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 the reason why this is so important is because even when you're not even praising God. Scripture says that the rocks still cry out. Our body is made. God has made our body mystically. And this is why that no clone can ever exist and sustain. It will be possessed. It will be used for evil. Our body is mystically made. Not to be duplicated or cloned. Our body is mystically made with a cherubim. The structures of the church are mystically woven into our flesh because that is eternal praise. So that the glory of God rests upon us. We are made to be houses of God and, and thrones of God that he rests and rides upon. And how does he, what does God rest upon? He rests upon the praises of his people. And if the cherubim mystically are woven into our flesh, there is eternal praise and worship. But even more so, when we praise and worship, when the cherubim praise and worship, it attracts the glory of God. The glory of God, God rests. He, he ascends from the cherubim. He rests on the cherubim because that is his throne. That is a throne he rests on, he sits on, and he rides upon. Same thing with us. We are the summation of what he, God, was meant, always designed to rest in, and rest upon, to ride with. We are his vehicle on the earth to manifest his glory. But he rides upon the praises of his people. In the cherubim, night and day, praise the Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is, is to come. The whole earth is full of your glory. And the whole earth is full of his glory because the divine is concealed in nature. You see? So, so this cherubim, this cherubic structure, these beings, these living creatures, can also be used. They're used for destruction or restoration. When they came in the beginning of Ezekiel, they came, they were leaving, and it caused destruction. When they're coming back to Israel in the temple, it caused restoration to Israel. So it depends on which side you're on and facing the cherubim. It just as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, the angel that went uh, behind Israel caused destruction, chaos confusion to the Egyptians, coldness in, in night to the Egyptians, but daylight and warmth to the Israelites. So angelic beings can cause destruction or restoration depending on which side they are and what they're doing. 
So it was in closing is that what is more important what to leave is that human beings are the only created created structure, created being that is the very house of God. Lucifer wasn't made a house of God. Angels are not house of God. Cherubim are not house of God. Human beings are the summation of the house of God. They are summation, they are living being. God rest and lives in a living being. And he wants to be close to his people. And the only way he can be close to his people, the closest way is to be living within that person. That's the closest relationship you have intimately with a person is to be within that person, to be one with that person. So we we have heaven within us. We have these angelic company and structures within us. And it's the, and it's the praises and the worship of God that draws the glory to descend as the glory descends upon the cherubim throne. And we are that. The glory descends upon us and in us, through us and out of us, you see, for blessings and to our enemies' destruction. So you are a powerful being. You're a powerful being that can be used for good, for your family, for your loved ones. But we also have power to root up and destroy. It's a time and season for everything. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you the next one.